reason why we admire feminine women who, for example, have made it is because they have been able to say no to things. Hello lovely feminine friends, welcome back to the channel. I always say the same spiel every time I hit that record button, but I do not want it to go unnoticed. I am truly grateful every time you hit the like button, for those of you who are new here, who hit the subscribe button, and for all those of you who leave your lovely comments down below that help bless other women on their feminine journey. You may have noticed over the past several months, I have frequently discussed the concept of feminine freedom, of feeling more liberated as I stepped into embracing my authentic and more traditional femininity. This is a feeling that I want for you because it does give us a lot of happiness when we are able to live in alignment with our values and the picture of the woman who we want to be several years down the road. That being said, today I'm going to discuss a couple of things that I did to get to that point that perhaps might help you. Let's dive right into it with acknowledging the pink elephant in the room, something that I also continuously talk about on my channel, which is rejecting society's concept of a successful woman. We know that the feminine woman is often vilified in today's popular media. For example, she might actually be the villain in a movie. She's also commonly depicted as the mean girl who only cares about her appearance. But if you're familiar with true and authentic femininity, you know that it goes so much deeper than that. I'm always harping on this channel how the physical attributes of taking care of yourself are tools to get you to feel characteristically like a more feminine woman. They aren't the end result. They are just a byproduct of femininity. And women living in the Western world, we are often fed from a young age that in order to be successful, we have to reject characteristics of femininity and replace them with more masculine traits. So many of you have sent me DMs, have commented down below how even your own family members have acted from a place where they want you to repress your femininity. They want you to reject a lifestyle where you would be able to express your femininity. And I want you to understand that this often is coming from a place of love because they are just projecting what society has fed to them, what they have seen play out in their own lives. And they are acting from insecurity, wanting what is best for you, but not realizing that what might be best for you is living an authentic feminine life. So you have to venture on what I like to call a deconstruction journey. I want to give you an example of this through what I learn in pageantry. And I do often mention my experience in pageantry, not to make myself sound better than anybody else, but with the purpose of telling you that this is the main arena where I saw different archetypes of femininity play out. And when you take away all the glitz and glamour, the outward appearance, what truly mattered was the character. That is the winning factor that was a commonality among everybody who ended up on top. And many women who were able to embrace race authentic feminine character did so through training in a deconstruction journey. There are countless countries, especially Latin countries that don't even allow their delegates to compete at the national level until they go through something called personality refinement. They have to work on being more outgoing. For example, they have to learn how to hold a proper conversation. They have to embrace their feminine interests. They have to understand that community service and serving others people is an important aspect of femininity because the feminine nurturing heart grows through doing so. Many of us think that we are living authentically, but we don't realize that we are products of our own environment. And to an extent, we cannot escape this. But in order to deconstruct what you see as a successful woman and the kind of woman that you want to embody, you have to understand that these influences are all around us. And it is okay to surround yourself with a diverse array of people. People. There is a place for every woman in this world, but you have to have the self-awareness of who you actually want to be and what values are most important to you. Once you lay those out, it is so much easier to feel feminine freedom. And finally, an important concept to this in breaking free of the shackles of feeling as though we need to live like the modern woman is to understand that we will continuously deal with judgment and criticism. 
I made a video entirely dedicated to this topic, so I'm also going to link that down below. And I encourage you to watch it after you're finished watching this video. But what I wanted to say on that is that it is okay and completely natural, especially if you are a feminine woman, to want to be a part of the group, to want to please others. And it's funny because I do get comments on this channel sometimes where people think I am a judgmental woman with regards to others. But if you actually stepped into my life, you would see that I have a vast array of different women supporting me in my friendship circle. And this is what I also want for you. Of course, it's important to meet other feminine women and other traditionally like-minded people for you to bond with that serve as cheerleaders on your journey. But embracing femininity might also serve as a good tool to weed out those people who don't have your best interests, who are quick to judge you, and who might not be in your life for the right reasons. So as you become a more feminine woman, a big way where you are going to be free in expressing yourself uniquely for who you are is that you are going to have to overcome jealousy and hatred and grudges because all of that energy spent on someone else or what somebody else has or who they are is going to impede you from using that extra energy to focus on your character flaws. I've talked about in the past how this was a big impediment on my personal growth journey. And one of the biggest ways that I overcame this and that is a tool that I use every single day is reminding myself that somebody else's success <laughs> doesn't take anything away from you. We live in a hyper-driven competitive society. We are trained to view other people as threats, but there are seldom few things in this world where there is only one winner. There is plenty to go around for everybody. Learning to be grateful for everything that you have in your life is a feminine trait. Doesn't mean the masculine men don't have this as well, but practicing daily gratitude is going to help you grow as a feminine woman. Now with regards to hatred, when you learn to be nice to those who might not give you the same courtesy, you will be surprised to find that this is a liberating feeling. The feminine woman is very giving of her energy, not in a wasteful way, but in a way where she is able to let go of the things that aren't meant for her, are the things that don't serve her. And hatred is definitely one of those things that will not serve you. As human beings, we have a tendency to want finality. We want to rationalize why somebody might not be nice to us or why they can't forgive us like we have forgiven them. So in order to feel authentically free, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that there are certain things in life where you are not going to have the answers. And holding on to that is just going to be a distraction in your life. When you live in a headspace of negativity, you are more aligned with the masculine energy because it's going to cause for you to want to take actions to remedy the situation. But in order to tap into that feminine freedom, you're going to have to understand that there might not be anything you can do in a particular situation and you're going to have to be able to sit with that. Next up, we are going to discuss the discipline, which seems like an oxymoron because discipline is often associated with the doing energy of masculinity, but hear me out. In the past on this channel, I have talked about the masculine structure, especially in homemaking, being a place where femininity can thrive. And I'm not the only content creator on the internet who has discussed this. So the reason why you want to incorporate more discipline in your life is because you don't want to be bombarded with continuously having to put out fires every single day. What I mean by this is that when you're embracing a softer feminine energy, you're already going to be placed out of your comfort zone and that expends a lot of energy in itself. So in order to be successful at this, you're going to want to implement daily routines time blocks where you can actually have feminine rituals when it comes to your appearance, journaling, taking a dedicated hour to educate yourself on femininity through these videos, for example. And it can't just be a series of checklists. You're going to want to dwindle it down to understanding your why. This is also another theme that I've discussed on this channel. In order to actually reach the pinnacle of success that you have envisioned for yourself when it comes to feminine freedom, you are going to have to understand your 
true motivation. This is another reason why I have mentioned my faith on this channel. I really wrestled at the beginning of this channel with discussing my faith because I didn't want to just seem like another karyotype of a femininity channel that incorporated faith, but I realized that I could not have this platform without discussing my faith. Because for me, one of the driving factors that motivates me every day to create a structure where my feminine can thrive is through the expectation of being a productive Christian woman. So for you, whatever your why is, it doesn't have to be the same as me, but it has to be one of those things that you can go back to every single day and remind yourself where you're going and for what purpose. Another way where I tapped into feminine freedom was I learned to understand stress and my negative emotional habits. Many of us struggle, for example, with laziness. I myself gravitate towards the emotion of grumpiness. Even though nothing turns out perfect in my life, I do have a perfectionist tendency, so I get really fixated on small things that are difficult to change. One of the ways that I was able to tone down this negative tendency was getting a handle on my stress. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to impart on you is the saying that it doesn't really matter if you can pay for it. It doesn't really matter if it is something that is fleeting. Whatever you are stressing about, if it is something that has a fix monetarily, for example, then it doesn't really matter. This doesn't mean that I expect you to be a millionaire that can just throw money at each problem. This is not how we want to solve our dilemmas. Rather, it is a tool for putting things into perspective. Relationships cannot be replaced with monetary value. I've also previously discussed on this channel the importance of incorporating small things that bring you joy every single day. I hadn't realized that since the beginning of this channel, I truly invested in seasonal dishware and seasonal decor. I really enjoyed doing this because I would go thrifting. I would incorporate it in my vlogs. I would show you the things that I bought. And again, I'm not saying that you need to throw money in order to alleviate your stress, but try to find a way where you can incorporate everyday little things that bring you joy. When I looked at my seasonal decor in my house, it brings me so much joy and I can't exactly describe it to you why I feel that way, but I am somebody that is very influenced by her surroundings. And if you are a feminine woman like myself, this might also ring true for you. So I'm sitting right in front of this window and my pregnant self is feeling a little bit warm. <laughs> so I'm going to end the video by talking about how you can gain more feminine freedom by learning to say no. Now this doesn't just mean like saying no, for example, to your friends who want to hang out tomorrow night and you just are absolutely exhausted. This goes more along the lines of being able to quit things in your life. Now, Cynthia, you just talked about discipline, but now you're encouraging me to quit. There is a difference between not embracing a challenge and being able to understand when things are wrong for you. I wouldn't have the husband that I have today. I wouldn't be the homemaker that I am today without having to have made hard decisions in quitting past relationships that were toxic for me, even school programs that I did not enjoy that just felt wrong to me. And I think it's less about giving up on things rather than finding the things that are worth not giving up on. We live in a culture where changing your mind and perhaps going the route less traveled on is often frowned upon. And as a feminine woman, you're often going to find yourself walking alone, especially if you are somebody who embraces more of a homemaking lifestyle, you are going to find yourself continuously feeling those negative eyes on you as you make that decision. But a strong feminine woman is able to tap into what I like to call feminine intuition. You can't be afraid of people calling you a failure, for example, as long as you are confident with your decision. Changing your mind on something is okay as long as you have the right intention and you truly go through the process of introspection. Don't look to the outside world for validation on your life choices. The reason why we admire feminine women who, for example, have made it is because they have been able to say no to things. They have been able to push aside criticism and understand what is truly right for their Life. If you liked today's video, please remember to hit that like button and you can also go through my femininity playlist as well as the other videos that I have linked down below. I wanted to wish you the best week ever, my lovely feminine sisters, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.